Just as with fractions, mixed numbers require common denominators when adding or subtracting. Looking at our first problem here, we'll need to find common denominators, look at multiples of the biggest, 9, then 18, 6 goes into 18, so 18 is our common denominator. To get from 9 to 18, you multiply by 2. To keep it balanced, you always have to do the same thing to the numerator. To get from 6 to 18, you multiply by 3. Same to the numerator. So 10 and 4 ninths becomes 10 and 8 eighteenths. Five and one six becomes five and three eighteenths. Signs are the same, we're adding. We're certainly going to keep eighteen. Eight and three is eleven. Ten and five is fifteen. So here's our first answer, 15 and 11 eighteenths. Looking at the next problem, we'll need common denominators. Look at multiples of the biggest, 10, then 20, 8 won't go into 20, 30 still won't work, 40, 8 goes into 40. So 40 is our least common denominator. To get from 10 to 40, you'll multiply by 4. Do the same to the numerator. To get from 8 to 40, you multiply by 5. You do the same to the numerator. The signs are the same, we'll be adding, but I like to put the largest number on top as a general rule. Since we're adding, it wouldn't really matter, but that's just how I prefer to set them up. So 6 and 3 eighths becomes 6 and 15 fortieths. Seven tenths becomes 28 fortieths. We're certainly going to keep our 40. And then 15 and 28, carry that one, 43. The 6 just comes down. We can't leave it in this form because 43 fortieths is 1 and 3 fortieths. So what we actually have here is 6 plus 1 and 3 fortieths, which gives us 7 and 3 fortieths for a final answer. Looking at this problem, we'll need common denominators. Multiples of 15 are 15, then 30. 10 goes into 30, so 30 is our least common denominator. To get to 30, you multiply by 2, so you do the same to the numerator. To get to 30, multiply by 3, do the same to the numerator. The signs are different, we will be subtracting, but I always put the larger number on top anyway. So 6 and 8 fifteenths becomes 6. and 16 thirtieths. Two and seven tenths becomes two and 21 thirtieths. So we would keep the denominator of 30. The signs are different, we are gonna subtract the larger numbers on top, but if I have 16, I can't take away 21. This means I'll need to borrow 1 from the 6 
and add it to 16 thirtieths. So 6 becomes 5, and I add a 1. Need common denominators when you add, so we want a denominator of 30. That means we have to have a numerator of 30. Now this is a lot to look at, so I'm going to rewrite it. Becomes 5 and 46 thirtieths. And I'll just bring this one over. Again, signs are different. We're subtracting. Well, we certainly know we're keeping the 30. 6 subtract 1. 4 subtract 2. This leaves us with 3. But you can't leave it in this form because 25 thirtieths has a common factor of 5. So this is equal to 3 divide by 5 leaves you with 5 divide by 5 leaves you with 6. Looking at number 4 we need common denominators but it turns out that 14 will work because 7 goes into 14. To get from 7 to 14 you multiply by 2 do the same to the numerator so 9 and 3 fourteenths just stays 9 and 3 fourteenths. But 5 sevenths becomes 10 fourteenths. Again, we want to subtract, but if you have 3, you can't take away 10. So 9 becomes 8. We add 1 in the form of 14 over 14. And now we'll rewrite this. So it's 8 and 17 fourteenths. And I'll just bring this over. And again, the signs are different. We are subtracting. Certainly keeping the 14. 17 subtract 10. And the 8 comes down. But we can't leave it in this form. This is equal to 8 divide by 7. Divide by 7. So 8 and 1 half. Notice these two problems are similar. This one the signs are the same. This one the signs are different. When you're adding a whole number and a fraction, you can just put them together. 37 plus 2 fifths is 37 and 2 fifths. But when the signs are different and you subtract, it's not quite so straightforward it'll be less than 37. If you can remember this, that's fine. I'll show you that you could borrow and get the same answer. So I'll say with borrowing, you have 37 plus 2 fifths. We'll borrow 1 from the 7. That gives us 6 and 5 fifths. 36 and 5 fifths is just a strange way of writing 37, but now we have common denominators. So this is 36 and 5 fifths. We're going to add 2 fifths. This gives us 36 and 7 fifths. But 7 fifths is improper, so it's actually 36 plus 1 and 2 fifths, or finally 37 and 2 fifths. So that 
got us to the same place, but it certainly is a long road. Now looking at this one where the signs are different, positive and negative, we will need to subtract. We'll need common denominators. So 7 becomes 6, and the 1 that I just borrowed, I'm going to write with the denominator of 5, thus a numerator of 5. So we have 36 and 5 fifths. We'll put the two-fifths underneath the fraction. We're certainly keeping our denominator of 5. 5 subtract 2 leaves us with 3. 36 just comes down. Oftentimes, instead of having to write a common denominator to show all this, you might be able to do this in your mind. So if you have 37, you want to take away two-fifths. It's going to be a little bit less than one, right? So that's 36. And if you look at two-fifths, if you had three more up here, you would have five-fifths. So three is what's missing from this to make it a one. So 37 becomes 36 and 3 fifths. Forgot to circle my answer. But you can see it's the same as over here. Okay, looking at this one, the signs are different, positive and negative. We'll need common denominators. 6 becomes 5. We want denominators of 7. So I'll rewrite 26 as 25 and 7 sevenths. And the 4 sevenths I'll just put underneath the fraction. We're keeping our denominator of 7. 7 subtract 4 is 3, and this 25 just comes down. So 25 and 3 sevenths. Again, trying it in your mind. It's going to be a little less than 26. It'll be 25, you know the denominator is 7. So how much do we need to make this a 1? You need 3 more. 25 and 3 sevenths, that's exactly what we got. We'll go over one more example of doing the calculation in your mind. If you had, let's say, 15 and you're trying to subtract 7 ninths, you're going to end up with 14, one less, and to get this to 9 ninths, that would be that you subtracted 1, you need 2 more. Looking at number 8, both numbers are positive we're going to add, that means we can rearrange their order. So number 8 is actually like number 5. We can just put the whole number and the fraction together. So 4 fifteenths plus 7 is the same as 7 plus 4 fifteenths. So we know we can put these together as 7 and 4 fifteenths, which is to say we can put these together as 7 and 4 fifteenths. If you'd like a little practice with these concepts, as long as you're at my website, you can download a worksheet along with the detailed answer key.